Hello, it's Crafty Ria. I'm so glad you are joining me again today. Today I am doing my second project video for the new company, Craspire, C-R-A-S-P-I-R-E dot com. They are f affiliated with BB Craft and they reached out to me and asked me if I would like to do some videos for them. I'm already doing videos for BB Craft and this is separate. I get to go on the website and pick out about $40 worth of items and they send them to me and I have to do an unboxing video and then two project videos. This is the second project video for this particular order. Their customer service is absolutely excellent and I got my order right away. They sent it via FedEx and it got here probably less than a week from when I ordered it, which was amazing. I did not expect to get it so soon. They mostly have the supplies to make these wax seals, the envelope seals, and they have a few other supplies. Now I've not done anything like this before. This is brand new to me. So um, I'm learning right along with you and I hope to bring some of this um, knowledge to you as well. If you saw my last video, you would have seen that I made these five seals. I made two peacocks, and if you know me at all, you know I love peacocks. I, of course, had to pick that one. I made this cute little doggy seal, and then I made the two smiley faces. I love smiley faces. Okay, so I have those, and I want to use some of them as embellishments. So I'm going to set these aside. I also ordered from them this pack of stationery, and I'll show you the different papers real quick. We have this one, and these are the envelopes, and they open on this side, which is really cool. And then you have your big pieces of stationery. There's this orange set. And there's this. This set I think is so pretty. And then there's this set. I think this goes in the landscape orientation. And there's these. And this set is very pretty as well. And then there's this. This is the last but not least, there is this set. Very, very pretty. So I thought these envelopes would be good to make kind of a slimline card. I don't know if they're the exact measurements, but I thought it would be neat to make a, a slimline card and use some of these envelopes. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna set aside one of these envelopes and I'm going to use one of these pieces of paper that matches. I haven't done anything with these before, so this is um, new to me, so we're going to be learning the dimensions as we go. I picked this paper because it went really well with this peacock stamp, or this peacock wax seal. It has blue and purple, and I think it looks really good with it, as you can see on here. Very, very good. So I'm going to use this as my embellishment. So the first thing I need to do is make a card base. And I'm going to measure the envelope because that's going to determine my card base. So I need to measure the envelope this way, and it is about four and three eighths. So I'm going to make my card base four and a quarter and we'll see how it fits. I'm going to take my Martha Stewart scoreboard and go ahead and score my paper. I had someone in my um, Facebook group ask about scoreboards and what brands I like to use. This is the Martha Stewart one. The 
scoring tool that comes with it has a very, very thin tip, and I find that it's rather sharp, so I use just my regular bone folder instead. But of course, that one will work. And I'm gonna go ahead and score this at four and a quarter. Now, if I didn't have a scoreboard, and if I just have one of these types of paper trimmers, you can also put your paper in here and use this um, little groove here to score your paper. Just measure it at whatever you know um, width you want, wherever you want your score, and then put your scoring tool there and then use that little guide to make your score. So you kind of get a free scoring board when you get one of this, any, any brand of this style of paper trimmer. The downside to this style of paper trimmer is that the blades um, wear out pretty fast and they're not as noticeable uh, when you're doing a thick piece of paper, but if you're um, cutting something very thin, you have to have a super sharp blade, otherwise you get a jagged edge. So that is my little talk about paper trimmers. I do like that paper trimmer. So I scored the paper on this side, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and then fold on that score line. And then I'm going to cut this on that line. And I'm going to use my We Are Memory Keepers. This is the guillotine style. I like this better. I find it gives me a cleaner cut than the style with the sliding blade. But that one does things that this can't. Like this one here, of course, I can't score my paper with it. So I have this four and a quarter, and this is by eight and a half. I just want to make sure this four and a quarter is not really going to be too big for this envelope. And actually, it is pretty snug in this envelope, and since it goes in this way, it's a little harder to get it in the envelope, and it also is going to have a thick embellishment on it. I'm going to take off just a little bit more. So I think I'm going to cut it to be four inches. That way it gives it a little more room in that envelope. Now these envelopes are not scored, so I'm going to go ahead and score this right at the eight and five eighths mark. And I'm gonna fold it over, there we go. And that's where that envelope is going to close, right there. And then my card, I'm going to trim this down just a little bit. I'm just going to eyeball it just so it fits inside this envelope really nice. I'm going to take just a little bit off. Like I said, I'm eyeballing it. It's no exact science to that. And then you see I have a little bit of space on all sides. So we're good to go with that. And then I'm going to, I want to use a piece of this piece and a piece of this, and I want to cut them to be about the same size. This is, ended up being four, so I'm going to cut it at three and three quarters. I might do three and seven eighths. I'll do three and three quarters. There we go. That looks really good with the, the picture there. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn this around and cut this at three and three quarters because I want this little piece here. And then I don't need that little piece, but I will put it in my paper scraps. And I'm going to put these two pieces together. I'm going to just kind of eyeball. I want to cut this one off somewhere around there. I might have to trim it up in a little, a little bit. Okay, so I have my card background. And then I have this piece of paper here. And then I'm going to put this one coming down from the top. I think I want to take a little bit more off of this. You'll see my method to my madness in a minute. I have a little piece of washi tape here. It just happens to be what I have hanging out on my desk. I folded the end over because I want to reuse this piece. I want to be able to lift it off real quick. So I'm going to line this up and I'm going to line this up. I want to try to make them meet exactly. And while I was doing that, I put the swashy tape on my pants and then I peeled it off. That way it does take some of the stick off. So then that's going to hold it there. And then what I'm going to do is fold this over and put some adhesive right down on here. And then I'm going to carefully fold this over just to make sure both sides are lined up and stick that down and carefully remove that washi tape. So there we have that. And then that is going to be my card base. So I want to, of course, decorate this card base and I want to cover up the seam. So I went through my scraps of ribbons and that sort of thing and I wanted to find out what went well with this because I love this one with it because it's got it brings in all the colors. It has the purples and the blues and everything. And I actually did not have this in mind when I made this. So I'm kind of lucky that it came out that way. I found this piece of ribbon in my stash. It is blue and silver and this does have silver on it. And I thought that would be really good right across there to totally hide that seam. And then I found some blue tulle in my stash and I thought that would also look good over that. And then with this over that. So I tied this in a knot just so it looks like this is kind of holding it gathered over it. So let's go ahead and put this together. I'm going to go ahead and let me see if there's a right side or a wrong side. No, they're both pretty much the same. So I'm going to go ahead and put some adhesive on the back of this. And then I will put this over here and that's going to totally cover up that seam. You won't be able to tell that it is two sheets of paper. I wanted to try to carefully line it up since we do have a line. And I will fold it over on one side. Take off the extra adhesive and then fold it over on the other side. So we have that and you cannot tell that it's two sheets of paper. Now I'm going to take this and I want to put it down with it off to the side just a little bit. 
I have some glue dots and I want to use one of these glue dots right under the knot or right on that knot. So I'm just going to stick the glue dot right on the knot and then stick the knot down kind of where I want it on the card. That way that's going to hold that in place and that piece won't be moving. Then I will turn it over. I don't want to put any adhesive up underneath it since um, it would probably show since it is sheer. I get my scotch tape out, my scissors. These are my fancy fabric scissors. I'm just going to go ahead and trim this and use the scotch tape and tape this down in the back. Kind of keep it about the width of the ribbon so that way it doesn't go too far, um, you know, too much wider than the ribbon over there. Trim that one off. I made this piece really long, but I had a big scrap. And I think I got both of these from Melissa. She always sends me her ribbon scraps. So Melissa, if you're watching, here we are. I'm making something with your ribbon scraps. I love them and they are perfect. There we go. And that way that is about the same width of the ribbon on the front. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere this down to the card base before it gets too heavy. I'm going to try to run my tape right over that. Yep, that works. And I'll run it right over where I have the scotch tape. And this paper is kind of like the weight of copy paper, so it's not super thick, but it's not super thin. So it's pretty easy to work with. Let me make sure this is opening the right way. And then I'm going to carefully place this down. I'm going to line up the top right and the bottom left corner while I'm holding the other two corners. There we go. That should be good. So then I have that. And then I have this to adhere down. Now the problem I have here is I do have a knot and it does have some height to it. So this won't lay flat. But I have an easy solution. I have these foam tape squares. They come on this roll. They are from the Dollar Tree. And I thought that um, they would be the perfect height to fit on either side of that. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that in half. And I'm going to go ahead and put it directly down on this, right on either side of that knot. I'm going to hold this over and I want to make sure it's going to cover it. It will. And let me double check. Yeah. And to make sure that it sticks down in the very middle, I'm going to use one of these glue dots. I'm going to set it just right over that that knot in the middle. That way it's just a little bit of extra oomph on there. And I will take my backing off. Look at how pretty the back of that came out. That is really, really pretty. And then I'm just going to set this down. Trying to make, my, make sure my peacock is in the right orientation. So we have that right there. And that is it for this card. I don't think I really need to do anything extra special to it. 
I have the envelope here where I went ahead and scored that and it fits perfectly fine. Right on in there. And then if you wanted to use the other thing, you know, you could seal this up with double-sided tape and then use this on the back. I would use my Elmer's glue or tacky glue and spread it evenly on the back of here and then stick it on here. And that way it would be just as if you sealed it with wax. It would look the same. Or you can use a glue dot on it as well. Or if you, you know, fill out your card, write your letter, you can go ahead and pour the wax directly on here and then make your impression. And the wax should stick to the paper because that's the idea of the sealing wax. So there we go. We have this slimline, I'm going to call it a slimline card, already done. I'm going to leave the blank in the, the inside blank for now um, because I could always write a message or stamp in there happy birthday or whatever I need it for. So that card is done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it gives you an idea of what you can do with wax seals. If you have any wax seals or even buttons or something like that, if you haven't yet checked out that new website, craspire.com, please check them out. They're brand new, they have great customer service, and they have very reasonable prices. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do click that subscribe button right down there. And while your mouse is there, just hit that bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. If you haven't yet joined my Facebook group, head on over there, Create with Crafty Rhea. We have so much fun. All the links about everything I talked about today will be in the description box below, so please do check them out. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate you. And until the next time, you know what to do. Go get crafting. Bye-bye.